What's up guys, Kenny from Bob's Strength and welcome to another episode of Making My where I meet amazing people who are you know chasing their passions and are trying to make them uh and today uh, I'm meeting with my good mate Will uh, from Prime Nutrition and I'm gonna take you guys out to uh, eat outside of the gym this time and I'm gonna eat some good uh Canadian food. Funny story, there's two of these restaurants in Cabramatta. Um, I was on the other side and uh, he's been waiting for, uh, here for about half an hour now so you know let's uh go <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for being late. Sorry for being late. There's another camera, but I'm going on the other side. How long are you there for? Uh, about 15 minutes. So I thought you were late. That's so why I was like, oh man, these guys are late. I'm never late, bro. Ever. Ever. And then, and then, I, was like, oh. and then I was like, oh, where are you? I'm a butterbomb. Where are you? I'm a butterbomb. This is the OG butterbomb. This is uh, probably been here a lot longer than the one that, that Ken was at. And this is the place that I like to frequent. Almost every weekend without fail, or at least once or twice a week. Yeah, let's see what's on the menu. Let's get you guys culture today. So, uh, Cabramatta is you know our hood. You know, I've been living here for a while now. You know, after the war, all the Vietnamese and uh, Chinese you know, started to immigrate and um, come around in this area. Uh, Cabramatta has a dark past about uh, 30 years ago. Um, you know, this place used to be the uh, drug capital of Australia. And uh, you know where all the gangs were, you know, started to build up. But you know, since the early 2000s, uh, with the help of the community, you know, the government and the police, um, they helped to just clean up this area. So now this area is pretty much the food hub of Sydney. So if you guys are hungry, definitely come down to Cabramatta and grab, grab some food. No better place to be when you want some good Asian food. Tell us about your childhood, you know, growing up in Cabramatta and, you know, the rough time that you had and now, you know, becoming successful, you know, entrepreneur, you know, opening gym and then now you own an online business. First of all, I'm humbled uh, that you even considered me successful or inviting me to do this Make Your Mark series. Um, but I guess, look, growing up in Cabramatta, this has been my life uh, for the better part of the last 30, 31, turning 32 now, 32 years. And Cabramatta is kind of all I've known, you know what I mean? Um, everything's sort of centered around here and I guess a lot of who I am stems from my childhood here. You know, I went to school here, primary school, I went to high school here. And um, I don't know, even my first job, well it wasn't too far away from me, it was in Fairfield working at uh, Fairford RSL as a trainee doing hospitality. You know, I thought that was kind of like where I wanted to start. I thought that was sort of with the industry I was going to stay in for the rest of my career. And I did that hospitality, I did that traineeship, but I sort of progressed through the ranks a little bit. It exposed me to a lot of money, yeah. um, like dealing with money as part of my role. And it got me interested in finance. So sort of like a long story short, it, it made me want to move into the finance world and you know, I started looking for jobs in finance. I got knocked back from a lot of jobs. People wouldn't accept me because like, I didn't have the piece of paper or qualification to say, you're qualified to do X, Y, Z. But I was a bit scared to go out and study because I wasn't sure how well I was going to do. Like I never really did well in school once I stopped caring. Going back to study was probably one of the best things I ever did for myself. I ended up finishing that course uh, with high distinctions. Once I got that piece of paper and I finished the course, I went out there, I got a job and I worked for a big four banks. So I worked in the banks for probably about five or six years. Thank you. Thank you. So, this is the bomb guys. This is bomb. As basic as it looks, thank you. This is really bomb. Alright, I've got the spicy satay, beef and seafood. Alright, you know, it's rude of me not to invite you. So here, let me put some noodles. Uh, so why do people find diet so hard? I think it differs from person to person in regards to obviously um, food and food choices and their relationship with food. One of the di most difficult things that I come across uh, for my clients is probably they don't know what to eat. But there's so many food options out there, right? Just think about the way I like to sort of tell my clients, it's like you can eat whatever you like. It's just that you can't eat however much of it you like, right? Because we right. take like a fairly flexible approach. So what I'll tend to do is give them ideas via picking, providing them a resource where there's like protein, carbs, fat options, and it also has 
um, your veggie options and your condiments, right? And I'll just say to them, look, all you need to do to figure out what you want to eat for the next week, if you're going to meal prep, is pick an option from your, your protein, option from your carbs, option from your fats, and then mix in whatever veggies and condiments you like. Um, and then get creative in a sense that you can eat whatever, you just got to be careful of how much. Something that I do commonly say to my guys is that there's no such thing as boring food. If food is what you make it, right? Yeah. There's only boring chefs. So if you're a boring chef and you're not creative, yeah, it's going to be difficult. Um, but if you're creative and you're willing to try different things, then it, it gets a bit easier, if you know what I mean? And I think those guys who are, who are a bit more creative or have a little bit more guidance tend to do better with their diet, especially with the adherence side of things. Now we're at a cafe called Cafe Nya. So what Cafe Nya means is a uh, coffee memory. <laughs> so today we're going to go back uh, back in time and just talk about some of the memories that Will had. First of all, let's just talk about uh, Will's uh, journey so far. Uh, so he's opened uh, two gyms so far and sold one. And now he's opened another online business uh, all about nutrition and training. You've opened up so many businesses. What is the drive behind that? You know, why are you always you know, doing the crazy thing and you know, trying to start your own business uh, and not be just an employee? Hopefully, hopefully you, you'll never see me as an employee anywhere. You know, I think um, once you start working for yourself, it's just, there's no better feeling. You know what I mean? Like, you'd be able to, to be able to do what you want, when you want and how you want is, it's, yeah, it's just indescribable. Come on, thank you. Um, cheers, 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 cheers. All right, coffee, guys. I guess where the drive came from. I think my probably biggest turning point to date is going back to uh, when I was telling you about my transition from hospitality to finance. You know how I got knocked back from a lot of jobs. Yeah. And um, to sort of fill in the gaps there. Coming from an Asian background, and you probably know this too, my parents or my mum always thought, you've got to go to uni to make it in life. If you don't go to uni, you kind of fail at life. Pretty much just the Asian culture. Unless you're a lawyer, um, doctor. a doctor, or, or something you know, really up there, you kind of fail at life. Anyway, so it's always sort of been my mission to, I suppose, show mum that you can make it in life without having a uni degree or a piece of paper to sort of like say, you're qualified to do so. When I finally decided that I want to take a career plunge from finance to do a PT, that was a big jump because in terms of like having a really stable and well-paid income, come going to starting from the ground and starting scratch again, that was tough. Um, it took me a while to build up again. And but I enjoyed it. I, I found a lot more enjoyment and excitement in doing what I do as a PT once I was qualified working in the field than I did working in finance, just facing a computer. The drive was just always there. It was just like, I want to be able to provide for my family um, and I wanted to be able to give back to mum because mum was always so hardworking growing up. Single mother, raised both Gary and I, my brother, and um, we didn't have much, but it was enough. And I think part of why I want to do well, or why I aim to do well, is I want to be able to provide not only for her, but for also for my family, you know? Um, as you know, recently married, got a baby on the way. I feel like I've got a bit of a deadline to um, achieve certain things before baby comes along to make sure we survive, you know what I mean? And that's my biggest why in life, is like, I want to be able to leverage my time and be there as a husband and a father and, and a son. Like, I didn't have a father figure growing up, it was just my mum my grandparents. I guess I want to be able to give my child or my family the experience that I never had growing up in having a role model or father figure, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah man, I think family is my biggest why and it's my biggest drive. So um, what makes Prime Performance different to all the other nutrition and uh, training uh, groups? Is there a lot different? I think um, probably the biggest difference is that we're full on uh, online only and we don't do any real face-to-face -face coaching. So people come to us for online coaching for nutrition and training. Most people who do come to us are sort of our target market, kind of know what they're doing. And um, it's just easy for us to provide a little bit of extra guidance. Um, other than the online coaching component, 
we do have a sort of like a PT mentoring, if you will, system. The biggest point of difference or in regards to uh, what else we offer is I hire PTs and basically I plug them into the gyms. And alongside that is I teach them what it takes to, I guess, build their own profile, their own portfolio of clients. Um, how to generate leads, how to, how to, I guess, close them as well. Um, because a big part of PT or this business in the fitness industry is knowing how to sell. And I think with any profession in life, if you can be a half decent salesman, you're always going to have a roof over your head, you know what I mean? Our goal is always to make sure people leave us um, better than the way they found us or when they first joined us, you know what I mean? Um, we want to be able to educate you, empower you with the tools to be able to fend for yourself eventually. A big part of our existence is because we wanted to make a, a difference and I want a team who's willing to be able to, who's willing to yeah. put in the work and make that difference, you know, and sort of share that vision and image that we've got. Cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Mukbang, mukbang, mukbang. <laughs> So for any entrepreneurs out there, you know, what is your advice, you know, for them, let's just, they're just starting out, you know, they don't know what to do, but, you know, they just want to do something. Um, probably just start, you know, I think, do what you love, and do what makes you happy, don't do it just for the money, and don't just be comfortable, because if you get comfortable, you get complacent, you start to regret it later on down in life, and I think, one of the best pieces of advice that I've ever gotten was from Amir Fazeli himself, the salty oh, strength coach. Yeah. So big shout out to him. Yeah. And he said this to, to me back in my younger days when I was in my 20s. And he said it to my brother too, to Gary, when Gary was doing work experience with him. Yeah. And that piece of advice was, don't party in your 20s. Don't spend all your time partying. Party in your 30s when you made it. Because that's when you can party harder. And that kind of stuck with me, you know? And when I had a conversation with Gary, he said the same thing. He goes, this is the last piece of advice that uh, me gave me before I left. And it just stuck with me. And, you know, it, it worked because it works for me. Uh, we party hard, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> you know, because we fucking party hard. Um, when we go down, we go down. <laughs> yeah, we go down. So yeah, if I, there's one piece of advice that I can say to anyone out there that's young, don't party now or don't spend all your time partying. Party when you've made it. Party in your 30s. Um, spend the time now, hustle and work. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode with Will. And yeah, remember to hit the subscribe button below. Uh, visit us at bubblestrength.com and definitely check us out on social at bubblestrength. Alright, so see you guys there. Remember to hit the follow button and catch up.